Okay, today we're going to look at diffusion. The first thing we're going to look at, and you'll see a, a thing of this on your PowerPoint, where I cut holes in an auger plate, and then I place two different crystalline powders inside of the holes. Okay, I have already done that, set that up, so we're going to set that aside and let that sit for a while. And we'll come back to that at the end. The next thing we're going to do is to look at um, how diffusion actually works. And on your worksheet and in your PowerPoint, you'll notice we set up a beaker and then there's a bag inside of it. Inside the beaker is just water, and I've already set this up for time purposes. And inside the beaker is also a bag. Now this bag is filled with water as well as salt, sugar, and starch. Now if I squeeze it a little bit, you'll kind of see how it gets cloudy. The cloudy part you're seeing is the starch. Okay. Now, in order to test whether the salt, sugar, and starch diffuse out of that bag and into the water that's in the beaker, we're going to run some chemical tests. You'll also see these on your worksheet. Now, the first one we're going to test is sugar. So what we're going to do is take some of the water, stir it up just a little bit. We're going to take some of the water from inside the beaker and we're going to put it in a test tube. And then we're going to use, if you'll look on your worksheet, we use Benedict's reagent in order to test this. Okay, now, Benedict's reagent requires an activation of the energy, which in this case is heat. Okay, now you see the color of this is actually a blue color. Okay, so that means the color of this is going to have to change from blue to something else for it to be a positive reaction. So we're going to place this one in this hot water bath right here and let it sit while we test the other ones. And we'll come back to it. Okay, so the next one we're going to test, we're going to test for salt. Alright, now what this means is if we get a positive reaction, it means that salt is present inside the water in the beaker. And what that means is that it diffused out of this bag and into the water that's in the beaker. Now the way we test for salt is to use silver nitrate. Okay? And you'll notice on your worksheet it tells you that a positive reaction is that it turns cloudy. Okay? So if you look right here, when I place a drop of silver nitrate into this test tube, if it turns cloudy, that means it's present. And you can see, just a little bit, if I hold it up against something dark, that it actually did turn cloudy, okay? So, that is a positive reaction. So that means salt diffused out of the bag and into the beaker. Okay, so on your chart, that's on your worksheet, and that's in your PowerPoint, we're going to go ahead and start filling it in. Okay, so salt was positive, and we know that because it turned cloudy. Okay? Now, the next thing we're going to test is for starch. Okay? So we're going to take some more of the water from inside of here and place it in a different test tube. And then to test for starch, we use Lugol's iodine. Okay, now iodine, as you probably know, has kind of a burnt orange color, right? Now, it has to turn from something other than burnt orange to be positive. Specifically, it's going to turn black if starch is present. Okay, so when we put this in here, I'm going to close that and shake it up. If you hold it up against something white, you can see that it's still burnt orange. Okay, so it did not turn black, so that means starch was absent. Starch did not diffuse out of that bag and into the beaker. Now, one reason that it did not do that is because it is a macromolecule. It means it's too big to pass through that bag, so it stays inside the bag. All right, so on our chart, we're going to go and we're going to fill out the starch was negative inside the beaker. Okay, and we know that because it was still orange. Okay? Now, the test 
sugar, we placed some in a beaker, I mean in a test tube, and then we added Benedict's reagent. Okay, Benedict's was blue, and we should have had to turn from something other than blue for it to be considered a positive reaction. Okay, so we're going to look at our test tube now. And you'll notice this looks like uh, baby food orange, okay? And it actually means that that's positive. So that means that sugar also diffused out of that bag and into the water that's inside the beaker. Okay, so on your chart, go back to our chart, and we can also add that sugar is positive. Now, it did turn orange. It may also turn green first. Um, so if you took it out a little bit early, it may be green instead of orange. But green or orange is a positive reaction. Now, instead of having to cut the bag open and actually see and test all three of those back inside the bag, what we can do is take our Lugol's iodine. <coughs> and what I'm going to do is place a drop of it on top of this bag, this diffusion bag. Okay, and if you look right there, it went inside the bag, okay? Now, if I let it sit here for just a minute, you'll start to see that inside the bag, um, you'll see dark granules that are turning black, dark brown, and that's showing you that starch is present inside the bag. Now, you already know that we started out with those three things, salt, sugar, and starch, inside this bag, and we were looking to see which ones would diffuse out. Now, based on your definitions from your PowerPoint, it tells you that a substance is going to try to reach equilibrium with this outside environment. So whatever's inside this bag, if it's small enough, it's going to continue to diffuse until it has the same amount inside as it has on the outside. So it would stand to reason to say that if it's outside in the water, in the beaker, that it's also going to be inside because whatever's going to be outside should be inside because they're trying to reach equilibrium. So on your chart, on the last three things that we have, you can actually put that they're all three positive inside the bag because we said they're trying to reach equilibrium so we know they're going to be present inside the bag. Okay, the last thing we're going to look at is your rate of diffusion. And your rate of diffusion, we use the Petri dish and the two crystallines, okay? Now, using this right here, we're going to look right here. This one over here is your potassium permanganate. This one over here is your methylene blue. Now, if you look on your worksheet, you'll see two numbers out beside each of those, okay? The molecular weight for potassium permanganate is 158 grams and for methylene blue is 320 grams. So the one with the lowest molecular weight has the fastest rate of diffusion. Okay? So the question asks you which factors affect the rate of diffusion. Okay? So one we just talked about was molecular weight. And again, the lower the molecular weight, the faster the rate of diffusion. Another one could be time, because I told you I set this up before the lab, and I let it sit for several hours, and then we came back to look at it. So time is another factor. Um, other factors could be things like pH, but the two main ones that I'm concerned about are molecular weight and time. And that is all for diffusion.